We're going to spatchcock this turkey. Do you all know what that is? OK, I like spatchcocking the turkey because it cooks a lot faster. If you get a 10 or 12, 14 pound turkey, it'll take maybe an hour and a half to two hours to cook, which is a lot quicker than normal. So what you want to do is put it breast side down, and we're going to take these kitchen shears, and we're going to cut this backbone out. And I like to save the backbone if you make gumbo the next day or turkey soup or anything like that. That's a great source of flavor for that. Okay, now you want to take the turkey and flip it over and you, you smash it down like that. Okay, a lot of people put stuffing inside the bird. I don't think that's a very good idea because it's going to take a lot longer for the heat from the oven to get to the inside. It's just a, I find a, it's better to make the stuffing separately, which Jill makes incredible stuffing. So now that we have this, what you want to do is take the old, my friend Meathead calls it the Simon and Garfunkel rub. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. You put that in the blender. You're supposed to measure it. I don't measure it. And you blend it up until it becomes like a, like a powder. And then you want to separate the skin from the turkey as best as you can. You can go there with your gloves and kind of reach around in there and try to Try to stick your hand under there and make a space. And then we're going to take some of that. We're going to take this, take this rub, and we're going to put it in between the skin and the, and the muscle. One thing I forgot to tell you, there is, there is one spice that penetrates the meat. Does anybody know what spice that is? Salt. So people that pepper or season their turkeys before or wet brine them doesn't do anything. None of those spices can get into the muscle. The only one that can get into the muscle, I should have said this first, was salt. So what you want to do is make sure that this comes out of the fridge with about a half teaspoon of salt per pound. After you finish uh, seasoning the bird, what I like to do is put a little salt on the skin outside, a little bit of extra black pepper. I like to put some olive oil on it because that'll make the skin crispy. And I put a little paprika on. It doesn't really add a lot in terms of taste, but it sure makes it like a pretty, a pretty color. I'm just doing this part. You obviously, you want to do the, the whole bird and the underside of the bird, too. I don't like to put it on a, in a baking pan because I like the heat to get it from underneath, too. So I'll take the turkey and put it right on the oven grate. Jill makes me promise that I'm going to clean it because that's a, that's a bit of a problem. You know, you, it does make a little bit of a mess. But you can put a baking pan under the, the turkey. So we're gonna, this is going to be preset to 325, and we'll stick that in here. Now, here's the deal. People say, oh, I don't know how that works. Oh, I put it on upside down, I think. I think I put the turkey on upside down. I think. I think. No, I, I can't do it. So, as I was saying, now, <laughs> now, Jill's not around, so, so I can do it. This is really important, though, for real. You need a meat thermometer. That is the only way you can tell how quickly the turkey is done. When it reaches 160 degrees, it is safe to eat. You can look that up on any of those uh, websites, and they'll show you scientifically it's safe to eat. If you overcook turkey, it's going to come out tasting like cardboard. Make sure that you put that in there when it's 160. Let it come out because it's going to cook some more after it comes out. It'll get to like 170, and that's kind of where you want it. Now, with regard to, cooking, to cutting the turkey, this is something I used to do all the time. I would take, I would, this is what it looks like. It looks good, right? What you want to do is uh, cut it this way. Cut the breast lobe off this way. And I'll show you why. You know how when you're slicing brisket, you slice it against the grain? Because it doesn't make it stringy and tough? This way, if you cut the breast like that, you're going against the grain. And not only does it make it more tender, but everybody gets a piece of that crispy skin on it, as opposed to just the one person who gets lucky enough to get the outside.